Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Plante part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we end our discussion on Bryophyta. Let us start the topic on Pteridophyta. So let us see what new do we study about Pteridophyta. So first we started with Thylophyta where there was no body differentiation at all. The next group was Bryophyta where there was some body differentiation which existed there but again there was no specialized vascular tissues. So now let us see in Pteridophyta what improvements do we see here. So here again body differentiation exists. So now we have true root stem and leaves. Like in bryophytes also there was some body differentiation but then again it was not too much distinct. But now we have distinct root, stem and leaves. Now these pteridophytes were the first terrestrial plants to have vascular tissues. So that is the improvement of pteridophytes over the bryophytes. In bryophytes there are no specialized vascular tissues. But in pteridophytes we have the specialized vascular tissues. What are the vascular tissues? Xylem and phloem which help in conduction of water and minerals throughout the plant body. So specialized vascular tissues are present. So vascular tissues when I say I am referring to xylem and phloem. We have spoken about xylem and phloem in detail in class 9th. Hidden reproductive system again here also. So they are also cryptogamy. So here also you do not see the reproductive structure externally. They reproduce by spores. Okay, almost 12,000 species of pteridophytes exist. So these pteridophytes are often termed as seedless vascular plants. Because in these plants we have the vascular tissues but there are no seeds again because the reproductive system is again hidden. So we do not have the concept of flowers or seeds. So these are seedless vascular plants. So you see gradually with each group we are having some improvements. Right? Talking about the habitat, they prefer mostly damp and shady regions. However, sometimes they are also found in sandy soils. So let us look at some of the examples of pteridophytes. Well, before that, talking about nutrition, they are also autotrophic because due to the presence of chlorophyll. So let us look at some examples of pteridophytes. Ferns are one of the best examples of pteridophytes and I'm sure all of you would have seen ferns. You generally have ferns as decorative plants, right? You do not have flowers on these, but uh, they look nice. Marsilia, Selaginella. And equisetum. These are some of the examples of pteridophytes. So now let us talk about the structure of pteridophytes. So how exactly is the structure like? I mean what are the different parts in a pteridophyte? So their main plant body is the sporophyte. As I said in bryophytes and thallophytes they were non-vascular plants. So their dominant uh, phase in their life cycle was the gametophyte but in this case the main plant body is the sporophyte so the plant actually the plant which we see the actually is the sporophyte that is something which carries the spores so that is the main plant body so sporophyte is going to be the dominant phase in the life cycle of a pteridophyte talking about the plant body it has true root stem and leaves so here you can see these leaves you can see the stem and you can also see the roots. Sporophytes bear sporangia subtended by leaf-like appendages called sporophylls. So here you can see this is the plant. This is a pteridophyte. So this is nothing but the sporophyte. As I said, the dominant phase is sporophyte. So the main plant body is a sporophyte again. Now this sporophyte will be a sporangia subtended by leaf-like appendages called sporophyll. So here you can see some leaf-like structures. So these leaf-like structures will surround together the sporangia and the sporangia will contain the spores. So the leaf-like structures are known as sporophylls. So what we can say that inside the sporangia we have the spores and these spores germinate to form a new plant again. That is why we told that pteridophytes mostly reproduce by spore formation. So somewhat like this. So we can say that 
So basically to understand the structure clearly, it is like you have a sporophyte. So sporophyte is nothing but the plant which you actually see. That is your sporophyte. This sporophyte will have some leaf-like structures and they are known as sporophylls. So sporophylls are the leaf-like structures. Now these sporophylls will actually enclose inside them a structure known as sporangia. Now this sporangia actually contains the spores. So, the, so now you understand where the spores are present. So now when I say that sporophyte is the main plant body, that means the plant which we see, the pteridophytes or the ferns which we see, they are all sporophytes. Somewhere inside their body, inside the sporangia, they have spores. Clear? So the structure is clear where we have the spores. And the leaves are known as sporophylls. Okay. So now we talk about another structure which are present here. Strawbilly. Strawbilly are present in some pteridophytes. Now the question is what is strawbilly? Strawbilly are cone-like distinct compact structure formed by the sporophylls. Now these leaf leaves, the sporophylls which I was talking about just now, the sporophylls will join together, all the sporophylls will form a compact leaf structure and that structure is known as strawbilly or cones. Sometimes it is also known as cones. So these strawbilly is present in some pteridophytes. Strawbilly are not present in all pteridophytes. In some places the leaves are like individual leaves in the form of sporophylls. But sometimes the sporophylls join together to form a compact structure called strawbilly. So examples of plants where we actually find strawbilly is uh, equisetum, selaginella. So these are some plants where, where strawbilly is actually present. Right now, when I talk about the leaves here, everywhere I'm talking about leaves, right? So when I talk about the leaves of uh, the the pteridophyte, the leaves can be small. The leaves can be large. So the size of the leaves actually depends. Now, if you look at ferns, they have got large leaves, right? Because that leaves give the beauty of the ferns, and that is why we often keep it for decoration. Whereas if you look at some plants like Selaginella, they have got extremely small leaves. So the size of the leaves again varies in pteridophytes. Some have larger leaves while others have smaller leaves. So now the structure is clear. In, the, uh, in pteridophytes, the main plant which you see is a sporophyte. Sporophyte has leaf-like structures which are called sporophylls. Now the sporophylls can be present just like that or it can be like a compact structure called strawbilly which is present in equisetum and thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again